welcome to the Bags to Riches podcast. I'm Zach Ginn, your host. I quit my minimum wage bag boy job to pursue the riches of real estate investing at the age of 17 and never looked back. I'm here to educate and inform entrepreneurs, young and old, how to become complete real estate investors by talking to the best and most influential minds of real estate. I'm joined by our guest today, Matt Larson. Matt is a real estate investor, speaker, author, and mentor from the great state of Iowa. He has taken this massive success doing over 4,000 real estate deals and is on a mission to educate and inform other investors how to duplicate his success. Thanks for coming on today, Matt. Hey, thanks for having me. Excited to be here. All right. So let's get started from the beginning. Um, this is called the Bags to Riches podcast. So please tell me your Bags to Riches story. Okay. Well, that, I love it. So, okay. So I started, um, I'm just going to back up and kind of take you from, you know, about what your age is just to kind of follow through the flow here. So in, uh, in two, let's see, when I, I got out of high school, I grew up in a small town in Illinois, 3,700 people got out of high school and, uh, uh, decided, you know, I was a football player, decided I wanted to try college. I wasn't very, a very good student in high school. Never, never have been real big on like, you know, studying books and, and stuff like that. Uh, as far as textbooks go. Um, and, uh, after high school, I went to played college for one semester. And uh, after that first, after that one semester, I decided that uh, I just wasn't into football anymore. It wasn't as fun as in high school. And even worse, um, you know, I wish I could say that I was, uh, you know, I dropped out of college. But uh, after one semester, they told me I couldn't come back. So, uh, so I ended up coming back to my small town that I grew up in. And, uh, didn't really know what to do next. You know, I'm not, I'm 19 years old at this point and uh, you know, I'm just trying to figure out what to do. So there's a, a, a machine shop in the, in the town I grew up in and uh, I went to work there and uh, at 19 years old and I, I was, I worked in that machine shop or, uh, or various machine shops all the way and through, through uh, 30 years old. So, you know, what happened was um, why I got into real estate was I grew up in a, you know, very poor family. Uh, we, you know, neither one of my parents had ever bought a house. And, uh, you know, I, we were, you know, on food stamps for a short period of time. My parents never really understood wealth uh, or wealth creation. They were under the mindset, if you want to make more money, work more hours. If you need extra money, cash in your vacation, don't take the vacation, take the money. So, I really didn't have anybody growing up that I could ask about making money. I was my, I came from a poor family. All of my best friends came from a poor family. And so you, you kind of, you know, you hang out with who you feel comfortable with. So what happened was I was dating this girl and uh, we dated for about four years. And uh, one day she comes to me at, at about 30 years old. We, we, I think we started dating when I was 26. She came to me and said, uh, she said, Hey, um, I want to break up. She says, I want to date somebody with status. Uh, I want to date somebody that makes money. And so at that point in my life, I had never thought about making money. I really didn't know making money other outside of a job was a thing. I really didn't. I wasn't an entrepreneur. I didn't know anybody that started their own companies. I didn't know any real estate people. And all of a sudden, though, I'm, I'm heartbroken and I'm trying to figure out how can I make money? So um, I'm stressed out up late one night, seeing an infomercial on TV about making money uh, without any, how to make money in real estate without making, putting any money down. And uh, I'm like, well, this looks like a pretty good deal, you know, for me. So, you know, at that time I just, I didn't have any money and, uh, I buy the $39 book and that's really how I got started in real estate. And, uh, uh, I, you know, I, so I did my very first deal within 30 days and, um, within, within three years I had, I had built a portfolio of rental properties big enough that I, I was bringing in $5,000 a month in net cash flow after all expenses were paid, which covered all my, my personal bills. And, uh, I, I left my job three, you know, within three years. Wow. So that, that's amazing. That's, that's so amazing. that, that's how I got started in real estate. So to kind of, to kind of take it even further, I, um, you know, in 2005, I did my first deal. 
So fast forward three years later, when I left my job, 2008, November 7th, 2008 was when I literally called my boss and just said, Hey, I'm not coming back. You know, yet, yesterday was my last day. I won't be, I won't be back. And so, um, and so if you think about the time frame, now you're, you're pretty young. So, uh, you know, you may not remember this very well, but in 2008, the world was basically coming to an end. I mean, it was yeah. mass hysteria. Hundreds of thousands of people were being laid off nationwide, practically almost every week. Unemployment spiked to eight, nine, ten percent in some areas and more, and uh, and everybody was, you know, people were losing their jobs. So here I was, at that time, you know, I I had built up a nice portfolio of rentals. I had some good cash flow, and I literally called my boss and said I was quitting at a time when everybody else was clinging to their job security, and uh, you know, I was scared. I mean, I was like, you know, I was scared, but I was, but I also had proven to myself what I was capable of. So. Uh, going into 2008, like I said, I had about $5,000 a month in uh, net cash flow, and I had about $20,000 in my bank account at this point that I had built up. And so the crazy thing is, this is the, the, this is the power of a, of a recession. Um, real estate investors doing the right thing uh, with the right, right strategy can make a lot of money during a recession. Everybody's always afraid of them, but they're, it's actually a gift if you're a real estate investor. So not only did my rents go up during 2009 by 15%, but now I'm full time in real estate. I have all my time to spend on just looking for the right deals, doing deals. You know, I, I do everything from wholesaling to fix and flip, uh, you know, you know, buying my own rental properties. And so I went into 2000, late 2008, early 2009, with like about 30 properties in my portfolio. And four, four and a half, five years later, uh, I had 450 houses in my portfolio uh, of my own personal uh, rental properties and, and went from 20,000 in my bank account in 2008, early 2009, to multi-millions saved up liquid cash uh, within five years. So, um, you know, that all was all possible because I built a very, very strong uh, foundation during the tough times of 2005, 6, 7, when it was really hard to find good deals. I was very, uh, I worked very hard to, to learn how to find good deals, even in up markets, just like what we're doing right now. Um, and, and then convert and start converting those deals into cash and rental properties. So, uh, it's been pretty a pretty wild ride. I mean, we made a, a pretty big, significant change in my lifestyle within a very short period of time. So when you were transitioning, quitting your job, things like that, I know your girlfriend broke up with you when you were 30 years old. Did you have any kids or no. were you married? At the, no, no, okay. no, no kids. Uh, wasn't, you know, no, not married, never been married. So do you think that made your transition a lot easier than others with a family? quitting a job well, and somebody could argue that somebody could argue like hey you know I have a family so I'm at a disadvantage but in reality um, that should be a motivator for some for people I mean if you've got a family and you're getting up every day and you're stressed out you're leaving work you're working you know 40 50 60 70 hours a week you should be motivated to use that that as motivation to to get you to the point where you're not um, you're not leaving or you're not in a situation that you don't enjoy but in your, to, at the same time, you know, I didn't have to worry about spending time with, you know, family as well at the same time. So. Okay. So you, when you said you started out, uh, I don't think you stated this here, but on previous interviews and things like that, you said you got started watching an infomercial on TV mm -hmm. and I was going to ask, so who was the guy on that infomercial? So it was uh, Dean Graziosi. Oh, really? Mm -hmm. Oh, I yep. love Dean. Yeah, yeah, so yeah, so it was Dean's book that I bought, and then I eventually got into uh, some of his uh, coaching programs. Okay, so yeah, I saw some interviews you did with him. So would you say he was your main mentor starting out in real estate investing? Oh, definitely. Uh, you know, Dean, the cool thing is, is I'll kind of tell another little story. So uh, in, in 2000, so I bought Dean's book in 2005, mm -hmm. and in 2000, Eight, 
he ran a competition called the Send Me Away competition. And basically, he took uh, his top 100, 200 students and had them submit the deals that they had done since buying his program. And what, what he was offering was whoever wins uh, this contest, they get sent away, all expenses paid by him, um, you know, to, you know, uh, a Caribbean vacation, first class travel, you know, limo ride to the airport and all that good stuff. And uh, so I, they sent me, this is back before cell phones, you know, now every single cell phone has a, has a camera in it. This is, this is in 2008. Cell phones didn't have cameras back then. Mm -hmm. So he sent out these little flip cameras and he just said, Hey, film a three minute video in front of some of your properties. And he did this with a couple hundred people. I think everybody submitted their video. And then um, he basically narrowed that down to like 10, 15 people and then narrowed it down to five. And I, and I got a notification that I was in the top five and I'm thinking, man, I got a real shot at winning this, this vacation. So next thing I know, I win the competition. So they, they contact me, hey, you've won, we need to book your travel. And I was very excited about winning because I'm very competitive, but honestly, I didn't really want to do the, I wasn't into vacations back then. I was in, I was, it was all about work and winning. And I wanted to build my company. So a couple months had gone by and they're like, hey, you know, we, they kept reaching out to me once a month. Hey, when do you want to book your travel? When do you want to book this vacation? And uh, a couple months had gone by and they contacted me and I was just kind of like, I don't know. And, and so what happened was they finally said, they contacted me one last time and they just said, we really need to book this. And I said, Hey, could I, could I do this? Could I trade the vacation in just to have dinner with Dean? And so, um, the cool thing is, is they were like, well, I think you're crazy, but let me ask Dean. And so they got a hold of Dean and, and, uh, he agreed. So uh, I, I flew to Scottsdale, Arizona, where he lives, and uh, met him at the Oceans Club one night, which is a nice uh, steak and seafood restaurant, and uh, we had dinner. And the cool thing is, uh, we really kind of hit it off, and uh, we ended up doing some deals together. And, uh, and then, long story short, I just continued to just crush, crush the game, and I was doing more deals than anybody, more deals than anybody he had, he had known at this, at this time now, by 2009 and 10, I was doing, you know, 10 to 20 deals a month. And Dean was mentoring me during that, during that time frame. And eventually he asked me to start helping him create his real estate education. So I did that for eight, nine years and, and basically was, um, uh, you know, creating a lot of what, uh, uh, he was producing. So it was a pretty neat story. Wow. And yeah, that's great. I mean, he's, he doesn't know this yet, but in one to three years, he's going to be on this podcast. He just doesn't know it yet, but uh, he'll be on, <laughs> but uh, yeah, he's that's a great cool. guy. Um, he's a guy I definitely look up to. I wouldn't say he personally mentored me like you, but uh, definitely an inspiration. So that brings us to the next question here is, I was looking more into your story and you've definitely had a lot of highs and lows in real estate. Um, so what was your highest highs and lowest lows in the real estate industry? Um, well, I would say my highest high was probably, um, there's a couple, couple cool things I, in, in 2000, I think it was 2014. I, uh, I interviewed, so, so Tony Robbins wanted to learn how to do single family homes and, um, Tony has access to anybody on the, on the planet. And he oh, was yeah. writing, he was writing a book and the book was, but he was, Tony was, was, was irritated because he, his critics were, were, um, criticizing him for, you know, Hey, you've got this amazing company and you motivate all these people. But as soon as they leave, they don't have anything to, you know, to apply that motivation and self-development to. So he decided for whatever reason that single family home real estate investing was the thing that he was going to plug everybody into. So he started asking around and, and one person led to another, led to another, led to another, led to another, led to Dean. And Dean's like, Hey man, you're, you're the guy doing all the deals. Uh, Tony Robbins wants, wants to learn, uh, you know, single family home investing. So do you want to, do you want to, do you want to coach Tony? <laughs> and I was, I was blown away. And so I did that exact thing. It was probably like my, the greatest 
you know, my greatest accomplishment in real estate was literally sitting with Tony Robbins, him, me, him as the student, me as the teacher in this <laughs> humongous, um, uh, conference or uh, his, his, his room at the Wynn, uh, in Las Vegas, he had this monstrous, you know, hotel room that you can't really even, they're like reserved for celebrities type thing. And uh, so I literally coached Tony for three days uh, on how to buy, um, buy real estate. Are you, are you hearing me? Okay. Sorry. Yeah. I got, a, I got, a, I got a notification that my internet went weak for a second. So, um, so anyway, I coached Tony. He didn't check a single um, message for literally on his phone. His phone did, he did not pick up a single message on his phone for three days straight. Oh my God. So he was just a very, very amazing student. We, we didn't take breaks as you can imagine. Um, and we basically ate while we were, um, you know, working, which Tony eats like a rabbit is like little salads and stuff like that. So, um, it was pretty neat, man. He's a very smart dude. Uh, I can tell you that he, I don't know if he's ever taken a, uh, an IQ test, but he's definitely a genius. He remembered every single thing that I taught him and it was pretty neat. It was a very, very neat experience. So I would say that was the high. Um, and then in, as a low, uh, you know, September 22nd, 2015, I remember the day like it was yesterday, even though we're coming up on, it'll be five years this year. Um, I get a phone call. So I have about 450 houses at this time. And I, I'm, I was, I was concerned because my property manager that was managing all my properties at this time was, I was, I had not received my rent checks for two months. So if you think about this, 450 houses, the average rent of $900, uh, you know, that's a lot of money for two months in rent. That's, you know, we're talking, what is that, you know, probably close to what, seven, $800,000. So, um, so anyway, I, I, I send her a message and I'm like, hey, we're meeting today and you're bringing a, a cashier's check. I want my, my rents. So she texts me back, yep, no problem, we can meet. Um, and then a very short time later, I got a call that she had tried to commit suicide. So she basically, long story short, took for 450 houses, took my rents for two months, all my security deposits, all my maintenance reserves, all gone overnight. It was over a million bucks. So, um, so that was tough. Uh, I had to, you know, I, I, not only that, but there was a lot of other stuff going on in the background where work orders were kind of not real work orders and there was money being taken and it looked like there was more houses rented than were, what were actually. And I started on top of the million plus that I lost I was also losing over $100,000 a month because once once that money uh, or once she disappeared, she took all the leases, all the uh, all the details, every single thing you could think of basically got deleted. I started from zero. I'm not even living in the state. I fly in to, um, to try to get control of the situation because I got 450 houses now and my tenants don't even know where to pay rent. It's September 22nd. I got eight days before. October hits and I got to figure out how to even contact my tenants that I don't know. And so it was very stressful. A lot of the tenants, um, obviously they were trying to make phone calls to a maintenance line that didn't exist. Now they can't get a hold of anybody for maintenance. Tenants are bailing right and left. They were already unhappy with the way she was managing. And so it was difficult. So I lost over a hundred thousand a month for several months in a row and literally thought I was going to go bankrupt. I thought, I thought that everything that I had built up until that point, you know, 10, 10 plus years of my life, I thought was going to go down overnight. Now, luckily, um, I'm, I was very, very big on saving money. So one of the lessons here that anybody can learn from this is you need to, you need to have liquidity. You need to save money. And that's really what saved me. I had saved up enough money that I could weather the storm. Barely. I barely made it, but I can't even imagine what would have happened if I hadn't done that. So one of the big things that you'll hear a lot of people talk about nowadays, a lot of gurus, uh, they'll say, Hey, you know, cash is trash. You saving money is stupid. It's a terrible idea. You shouldn't save money. You should invest money. Well, I'm just telling you guys right now from a real investor that really does a lot of deals. That is risky. That is a risky way to run your business. If you're not saving money, you're not, you know, something bad will happen to you. It happens to all of us. 
you, if you don't have the cash to ride the storm, you'll lose everything. So, um, so that's a big message that I hope everybody can learn from, from that story. Definitely. I mean, I, I hear it all the time. I got people telling me live poor, which means, you know, you, ba you make a lot of money and then you just invest it all. And then you keep barely enough to make it survive there. But, uh, for those 450 houses, so were they all leveraged or did you? Yeah. Have them? Okay. Yeah. I went, so in, well, most of them were, I might have owned a hmm. dozen of them cash or a couple okay. of dozen. I don't know. Um, typically what I would do is I would buy them, fix them up, uh, fi fix them up, refinance, you know, rent them out, refinance, and then now I've got the cash flow. That's how I was able to go so fast. That's how I built such an enormous portfolio in just a few years. And so, um, but so yes, they were all leveraged. So you've got to think I had, you know, taxes, insurance, maintenance, management, um, the mortgage, all that stuff still had to be paid whether there's a renter in there or not. So, uh, so the, cool, the cool thing is though, one of the cool things about that whole story is I built a pretty amazing management company and started managing all my own stuff. And, uh, I wouldn't be where I'm at today had I not gone through that. Like, it, you know, one of the, the toughest things about real estate is management. You know, it's yeah. the most unexciting part of the business, but it's the most important part. And if you don't get that part right and you're not collecting the rents, then, uh, then, you know, you'll never make any money in real estate. So, yeah. So fast forward now, you made your management company here. I mean, what's some rules that someone should look at when they're starting to buy multiple properties? They buy 20. I mean, what's the rule? Well, first of all, um, you know, I, I'm not exactly sure where you want me to head with this, but I'll just kind of talk out loud. Yeah. First of all, you should, every single property buy, if you're holding it for a rental, it should cash flow. If it doesn't cash flow, you should not own it as a rental property, period. Like, especially maybe like, okay, I have one property that is in Southern California and I feel like it's going to go up in value. That's super risky because their chances are you won't time the market right. But I can see where if you had one or two losing a couple hundred dollars a month and, but it's gaining 20%, you know, equity or appreciation a year, maybe you take that risk. Me personally, I wouldn't do that. But, um, so rule number one for me is make sure it cash flows after all expenses. Secondly is uh, for every single property you own, you should create, you should be saving money. If you've built a net worth of, let's say just easy numbers, let's say you've built a net worth of a million bucks, you should have at least 5% of your net worth should be in cash. Mm -hmm. Typically it should be higher. Um, I would go minimum 5%. I'd probably push towards 10%. So for example, if you've got a million dollar net worth, you know, 50 to a hundred thousand should be liquid cash. You know, that should, should always be the rule. Not only does that help you with uh, the banks, but it also helps you with, you know, just safety. So a bank is going to look at you if, as you, I, I was just talking to an investor. It's funny. I, I mentor some people and some people don't take me up on my advice and I always feel bad for them because they're going to learn the lesson the hard way. But I was talking to a guy recently and uh, he's, he quit his job. So now he's full time in real estate. And he, I said, what's your plan? He goes, well, I'm just going to buy, buy houses, fix them up, uh, rent them out, refinance them and pull my cash back and go on to the next house. And I said, okay, so you just quit your job. Yep. Okay. So now you're doing it full time. Yep. Doing it full time. I'm going to make all this money. And I said, okay, so tell me, what are you going to do in a year when your new tax return comes out and you have no cash, you're showing no income. So a bank doesn't look at just your net worth. If pe people think that a bank makes a decision on whether to loan to them based on net worth and they don't care about net worth. Very little. It plays a very small piece. They want to know what your liquidity is and they want to know what your cash flow, your income is. What are you paying on? What is your income you're paying on your tax return? And so it, these guys that are just just their only strategy is to buy houses, fix them up, rent them out and refinance. They that is a short term plan. And eventually the banks will say, Hey, I'm looking at your tax returns three years in a row. You've made no money because if you refinance and pull $10,000 extra out of a house, that's not income. That's a loan. So that doesn't go to the bottom line on your tax return and show as income. So you do that a couple years in a row and you show no income. The banks are out. They're not going to keep loaning to you. That's I a hundred percent agree to that. What I was trying to say is if a young guy like me, I'm, if I'm looking, I just got a hundred grand and I know I can buy four houses for 25% down. 
How many houses should a young guy buy before they start hiring property managers? Oh, I would say, you know, I built up a portfolio of about 30 houses that I did on my own. Mm -hmm. And I'm not saying you have to do that. But here's the thing is, if you want to learn the management business, and you, how, how are you going to know who to hire and how, what questions to ask and really, really how it works when there's a problem if you don't know how to do it yourself? You know, uh, property managers are, they're slick. I mean, they, they know how to answer the questions. And every single newbie goes to a property manager and thinks that like, hey, I read this book on how to interview property managers. So there's no way they can pull one over on me. Hey, what is your vacancy rate? And they say, you know, it's 5% they ask all the worst questions. Like they don't, they don't really, they don't really know what to ask. And they've read a book by probably written by somebody that doesn't even own rental properties on the questions they should ask the property manager and they can easily be fooled. So, so the big thing is, is I would, I, to answer your question, I would, I would do it yourself for a while. I'd build up, you know, 20 properties or so get to know those properties really well, get to know, get to understand what kind of maintenance work orders come in, get to understand how to screen tenants, get to, get to understand, you know, how to, you know, all the ins and outs of your leases. And when somebody doesn't pay, how do you evict? You learn that really well, like I did, then, then you can at that point, at least speak intelligently to a property manager so that you don't get fooled. A lot of them are there, there just to collect an, uh, you know, collect money. Um, some of these guys even even charge a, a management fee even if um, the house is vacant. I mean, imagine that. You can't lose if you're the property manager. So, um, so yeah, so I, that would be my advice. Ma manage them up to, you know, 15, 20 houses and see how that goes. Okay. And just last question on this because I these guys, a lot of the guys watching, they don't have hundreds of properties like you, but, you know, for people looking that do, you know, what would you say, how would you, what would you tell your younger self to avoid that mess you got in 2015? Well, I would definitely like, I won't personally, now I think on a big level, anything I do, um, it's going to be big. I won't take on a single opportunity any anymore unless I can make a million dollars from that opportunity per year. Wow. So for me, everything I do is big. So I didn't get into real estate to, to own 10 houses. I got into real estate to own thousands. So I would, I guess the thing I would say is, is why not, why not create a, your own management company, get into it, say, okay, I'm 20 years old, 22 years old, 25 years old. I'm going to buy my first property. Now I'm going to build that up over time, manage it myself. And then instead of hiring a management company, why not hire an employee to manage them for you? That's probably what I do. That would be the advice I would give my younger self. Don't, don't push it to a management company get it, learn the business and then hire somebody to do it for you and have that. Now that person, if you've got 20 houses or say 30 houses and you hire one person that helps you with the work orders that helps show the properties to potential tenants and helps you with the day to day, that's that person's not going to be a, it's not a, probably a full time job for one person for 30 houses. So push that person, teach them some acquisition stuff, have them go on some appointments to try to get, you know, you can kind of try to teach somebody from zero the, the all around parts of the whole business. Um, and that's, that's how I would do it now looking backwards. Okay. And so how many properties do you have now? Um, I've got about 250 right now. I sold in 2017, okay. I sold a couple hundred off and, okay. uh, and cashed out a lot of the houses I bought at the downturn, 2009, 10, 11. Hmm. I sold a lot of those off at, in 2017. Personally, that's why I don't like to predict anymore. I don't, I try, I thought, I really thought the market was going to peak in 2017. And uh, obviously I didn't, I didn't foresee Donald Trump being elected as president, but um, he's kind of, you know, I think w whether you love him or hate him doesn't matter. Um, he's kind of um, pushed the market up a little further. It, and, uh, and so it just um, cut rates again. Yeah. Yeah. It's, it, it's the same routine all the time. I mean, it's just a lot of scare tactics out there, but there's, there's an underlying message that, that the people in the know know what's going on that other people don't know. So this is all, this is all part of their plan. Um, yeah. and, and we're just, you know, we're just kind of puppets, but at least if you know how to play the game, you can get ahead. Yeah, I mean, this goes back to Tony Robbins. I, I went to his UPW a couple of years ago. He's a great guy. I mean, everything he does is on the next level. 
Um, I remember when he came out with the book Unshakable, I think four mm-hmm. or five years ago, he's, he was predicting a market crash since 2015. Right. So, you know, I mean, it, you can predict it forever, but until it happens, it's going to happen. So, you know, that's, that's the only thing I have on him that, you know, I just don't agree with him hundred percent on, but he's a great guy. So yeah. this brings me on to my next question here. So you've been doing a lot of fix and flips, wholesales, things like that. So what's your percentage of a deal that gets in of it being a fix and flip you keep versus something you just sell? You know, and this changes over time. This will yeah. change when your wealth changes. But the, the thing I would tell new people is if somebody getting into real estate, you've got to make cash flow and you need liquidity. Everybody wants rental properties and that's great. It's a great long-term plan and it's a great tax shelter if done right. But I would say do a ratio of either four to five houses for every one that you keep as a rental. So for example, let's say you, you wanna buy a rental property, go out and wholesale or fix and flip, you know, another one to four, probably four, before you buy another house. So for example, buy a rental, now don't buy another rental for three or four more deals, five deals, then buy another one. Now you've saved up cash, you've made, on a wholesale deal, maybe you're making five to 10,000 per wholesale, on a fix and flip, maybe you're making 15, 20,000, whatever, you're, it depends on what market you're in and how good of a, you know, you are at uh, conversion on uh, the leads. But, um, you know, do, save up that 40, 50, 60, you know, 70,000 maybe, and then buy another rental property. It's a great way to shelter the income and the, you know, the taxable income, especially that you make off of your wholesale deals and your, uh, your fix and flips. Okay. So in 2020 now, since you're still doing direct mail, cold calling like crazy. So what are your goals for 2020 with your real estate business? Um, you know, so it, I, I have a little bit different goal this year. So what, what I did was my operation, I have a big operation. We have 18,000 square feet. And my main goal for this year was to get completely out of my real estate company and let my company run itself, which we accomplished. We accomplished early. So I'm going to let that run for the year. You know, we'll do about the same amount of deals as we did last year, you know, you know, average and maybe about 20 a month but I'm just not working in the business any longer. I, I literally, you know, we, we, we flip 20 plus houses a month and I, or between flip and keep um, 20 plus houses a month. And uh, I only work less than five hours a, a week in my real estate company. So I'm 44 years old now. I'll be 45 this year. My goals are a little bit different than the average maybe person that's 20 years old. I want to work less and I just want the business to run itself. And so for me, free time is very, very important. When I was, when I was, you know, 30 years old getting started, I didn't care about work. I work 120 hours a week. It didn't matter to me. I was all just about growth and I loved it and it was exciting. But now that I'm older, I just have different goals. So um, I'm not, I'm not really looking for growth this year, especially because um, I know from experience that when the market crashes, that's when like, that's like throwing gas on a fire. It just gets very, very easy at that point. Not only does all of your marketing work better overnight, automatically your marketing works better. It also frees up contractors. Now all the contractors are out of work and they're working cheaper. So you save money on rehab material prices go down that saves money on rehab. So it's all these things start working together so I don't need to, I don't need to have my best year ever in real estate in 2020. I want my free time. Um, I'm building my education company and then I'm really just preparing for the next downturn where, where then, you know, you know, I made, I took $20,000 in 2008 and turned that into millions of dollars within a few years. Now that I have millions, I can take who knows that to what level once the next downturn hits. So that's kind of what I'm, I'm, I know that these, these recessions are, are a gift to, uh, to us guys in real estate. Definitely hundred percent. And so this brings me back to, so you're still into it. You're about five hours a week on your actual business here, but another business you've really been, you know, pumping up like crazy. Um, if I can say that is your coaching business. So, um, you have a lot of stuff going on with it. You know, I have a lot of questions for it, but the first yeah. question I have is, can you explain what uh, Podio Powerhouse is? 
Yeah, so we we use um, so we use a CRM called Podio. So a CRM okay. is just a it's just a way uh, a CRM is just simply put is just a way to track all your data. Like if I'm talking to somebody doing ten deals a month, let, let's say five deals. If I'm talking to somebody doing five deals a month and they don't have a CRM, I'm thinking, holy crap, they are losing massive amounts of money that they could be the more they could be making if they had a CRM. So the CRM of our choice is just what we use is Podio. Podio has got a basic platform and then you can start programming it. My particular Podio system, we have over a hundred thousand dollars invested in it and just Podio wow. programming. At one time I even had a, um, I had a Podio programmer on retainer because we were, <laughs> we were doing so much programming with it. So, um, so, so Podio Powerhouse is my acquisition system. So we've built all these automations into, uh, into our Podio system so that I think we have like 35, 40 automations in our act. So imagine you send out direct mail, uh, use direct mail as an example. You send out direct mail, you send out thousands of postcards. Now all the leads come in. What are you going to do with those leads? First of all, are you tracking those leads? Do you know what, what's working? How are you tracking them? Who's inputting the leads into your system? And then, you're going on appointments. What happens on each appointment? Um, if you're writing this stuff down on a piece of paper, you are losing, maybe you're making money, but you're not capturing the other tens of thousands or hundreds of thousands of dollars you could be if you had a CRM. So our, our Podio system does a lot of automatic uh, follow-up drips and sequences. And so one of the most important things that you can do in real estate is do follow-ups on the current leads you have. If you brought 75% of the leads we do are fought from follow-up campaigns. So imagine if you weren't doing follow-ups, you would be losing out on 75% of the deals you're doing. Oh yeah. So, um, so our Podio, we, we, um, like I said, I know my Podio is powerful because I was at an event um, with a Podio programmer that sells his version and he started asking me questions about what ours will do. And I just went through some of the automations that, uh, that ours was doing and his wasn't doing it. And he was selling his Podio, I think for 7,500 bucks, uh, which was still a great product, not going to rip his product at all, but mine did more and we sell ours for about three grand. So if somebody's looking for to create real estate as a business, they have to have a CRM in place and, uh, and we offer ours for about 3000 bucks. So. Wow. Definitely. That, that's pretty cool. I was just asking that cause I use Podio myself and I see everyone really, talking about their Podio products. So I was just curious about yours. And uh, yeah, that's cool. So you're also a big author here. So you actually came out with a book called Hidden Houses. Can you explain about that? Yeah, so I've got, now I've got a little paperback copy here. Okay. Uh, it's actually not in, available in stores yet in paperback. Mm -hmm. um, uh, Amazon, I think is releasing it in about two weeks. Okay. Um, so, so what it is, is what I found is over time, over the 4,000 plus deals that I've done, um, I, I found that there's, there's my three favorite ways in which I acquire properties. I basically wrote a, I think it's 70, 72 page book on the, the whole process, my three favorite ways that I buy houses. And so um, the biggest thing is, 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 most people, when they get into real estate, the first thing that they do is call a real estate agent and they try to buy properties off the MLS. Well, I'm not saying you can't get some deals off the MLS, but the problem is you're going to be fighting a lot of competition. What I like is, and the whole, the whole idea behind the whole hidden houses piece is imagine if you were trying to buy a house that nobody else knew about. What are your chances of getting a good deal on that house? They're a lot higher if you don't have anybody else making offers on that house. And the other piece is, is the list in which you buy and who you're going after to buy houses is very, very important. So imagine one of the criteria we like is we like vacant homes. And one of the reasons we like vacant homes is imagine if you own a house and you don't live in that house, that means you live in another house, but you're paying for two. And so what's the, if are, are you motivated, if you have, if you're paying for two houses, what's the chances you might be motivated to sell the one you're not living in? And what we found is the motivation is high. The other thing is, is I love houses that 
do not have a mortgage because if you can go into a property and make an offer on a house that has no mortgage and it's vacant, what are the chances you could get it at a great deal? Well, you don't have the bank piece in there, a bank loan as like a, a ceiling on what you can, you can buy that property for. So in this book, I basically teach people how to find hidden houses and what particular houses to go after. And it really reads, I'm a very methodical person. Everything in my company is systematic, which is why I was able to step away from my company working less than five hours a week and still have it produce what it does. So the book is more like a handbook, to be honest with you. Um, I've gotten a ton of reviews on the people. We sell it only digitally right now. Um, but I've got a ton of reviews on the book. Uh, from people who are like, holy crap, this book is amazing. It's filled with a ton of detail. I don't do any fluff. You'll see when I write books it's uh, or any of my products, they're, they're, they're systematic step-by-step -step processes. They're, they're handbooks. They're, man, they're, they're like a, uh, you know, very, very detailed. So that's kind of the, 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 the gist of my book. And when are your uh, Tony Robbins uh, three-day things recordings coming out? <laughs> my, uh, well, that's not, that, I don't have that access to that, yeah, no. but, um, I do offer, I do have, uh, I do some events at my office. Uh, a lot of people want to come and see my office, um, because we have a, we created what's called a, what we call a mini Lowe's. Uh, we have 18,000 square feet. We built our own inventory. Yeah. We're buying everything in bulk. So I'm buying products at an eight, up to an 80%, uh, below prices that you would go in and buy that stuff off of from Home Depot or Lowe's. So we created our own system for inventory. We created our own online store. Uh, we have a lot of unique stuff. So I do some online, I do some live events at my office because a lot of people just want to see the, the whole operation. And trust me, there's nothing like it in the United States. I've had people that have traveled the country. My suppliers that we buy products from are, they're like, man, we've been everywhere in the country. We just don't see anything like what you've built here. It's pretty cool. So uh, we do some uh, uh, some live events. I have some other products that I sell. You can find, if you guys uh, want to see, um, find me at, uh, at realestatemat.com is my website. And I also on Instagram, find me at just realestatemat on Instagram as well. And uh, you can see some of the stuff that we've created. Follow me on Instagram if you want to, um, you know, I'm always sh trying to share cool stuff that I've, I've learned over, over time and uh, some cool real estate tactics and, and uh, education as well. So, Great. So um, another question I really have for you is, I mean, you're obviously you're making a killing now. You do five hours a week in your business. Honestly, you could probably fly to Mexico, live there, and not have to worry about cash for a very, very long time. And, you know, you got the whole systems going down. I mean, why do you coach? Because I got bored, to be honest with you. Um, I, you know, when I got my company, what, it's, it's tough because mentally, um, when, you, when you're a worker, and I'm a worker, I, I, I actually like working, I enjoy working. Um, retirement's not, retirement's an illusion. Um, I retired a few years ago, made it three and a half months, living in a, a hotel in Florida, and just I was miserable, to be honest with you. Um, you have to do something. You have to produce. Human nature, by at least by somebody like uh, high, high achievers, they want to produce. And I wanted to get my company to the point where I didn't have to get up and work every day. And I got to that point. And it runs amazing. But all of a sudden, I don't have anything to do. What, what are you going to do all day? What, if none of your friends are retired or they're all running their own businesses, how – what are you going to do? Watch TV? I mean, you can go on trips all the time. And I do, I travel nonstop. We're always doing something fun, going somewhere cool, but, uh, I want to produce and I want to, and, and it's also another way to just give back. It's neat when you, when I, I get the biggest kick out of somebody that goes and buys one of my products, reads it, applies it, and then sends me a message, Matt, holy crap this is the coolest thing ever. You're not going to believe what I just did. I got your, I got this training book that you created and I just did this, this, and this. It's pretty cool. It's neat to be able to think about what, you know, you create a product and then somebody puts it to use and then it sets, could set up their family and change the course of their family, you know, uh, landscape. So it, it's pretty neat to, to be part of something like that. That's awesome. So, um, I like to end this podcast with the same question I ask every single guest at the end. 
Uh, so if you were 17 years old again, you were in the Quad Cities and you had 200 bucks to your name, no college, straight out of high school, what would you do to become the next Matt Larson? Boy, I tell you, what I would do is I, with 200 bucks, it's not enough to do a ton of marketing with. Um, I would find a wholesaler trying to wholesale properties and I would try to take a deal that they have and then take that deal and maybe find another wholesaler that has buyers and I would try to become a middleman between two wholesalers and make money in the middle. It's literally a no money down strategy where you put up nothing for marketing, no earnest money. Literally, you're just wholesaling contracts back and forth. And the amazing thing that I found is you can take two wholesalers from the exact same city and both of those wholesalers have different buyers and they get different leads. So yep. uh, I could do I could do that strategy anywhere in the country, drop me in any city with no cash and I, I could put that together in probably a week. So wow. that's what I would do. And then once I, once I close that deal, now I have some cash, then I would probably start investing. I would keep doing that strategy and I still do that strategy today. Um, but I would take some of that cash and just start building my company and do some marketing. Definitely. And probably start reading, uh, you know, hidden houses, try to, try to get some more education. hundred <laughs> percent. So, of course, I, I, I'm a big believer in ed self-education. Um, in 2019, I spent $90,000 on masterminds and hiring wow. people to teach me. So I'm, I, I spend tons of money and have forever, uh, for years and years and years. I, so not only do I sell education, I'm one of those guys that says, hey, I also need to learn. I'm never going to stop learning. And uh, I invest a lot of my own money into learning as well. Definitely. I mean, it's, that's crazy. I mean, that, that whole Tony Robbins thing is just, you know, that guy, you can only imagine, he's probably, he knows everything about people, humans, and he's still getting education yeah, from 100%. you. Yep. So, you know, I, I don't know if you have better students than him, uh, but definitely, you're definitely on the right path coaching wise. And I really appreciate you coming on. I mean, do you have any parting thoughts to the audience before we uh, sign off? Um, I just tell everybody to uh, be consistent. You know, uh, if you're going to do real estate, do it and do it daily and be consistent. And you'll, you'll be surprised at where you land in, in one to five years. You, 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 you'll be in a totally different space. So. Wow. So I really appreciate you coming on, guys. Check them out. Hidden Houses, realestatematt.com. All your socials is below you right there. And uh, we'll see you guys in two weeks. Thanks for watching.